Welcome to the Master of Disaster series. In this one, we'll create virtual protection groups. So here's our agenda. First, we'll define what a virtual protection group is in the Zerto world. We'll look at the requirements, and then we'll create a virtual protection group. A virtual protection group really offers complete application protection and recovery at the VM and VMDK level which creates a consistency grouping between either functional or application affinity groupings of, of machines. It protects across server and storage locations, so regardless of where it exists or where it's running, we can create a VPG. We'll show you in a graphic here in a second. Fully supports vMotion, storage vMotion, HA, and vApps from VMware. We are a journal-based point-in-time protection mechanism so you can go back as far as five days in the journal and recover from that point in time. Since we're integrated so closely with vCenter then the roles and permissions in the administrative part of vCenter you can apply that through group policy with Zerto. A very key thing is VSS support as well as application consistent checkpoints for Linux as well. So a common deployment of Zerto with virtual protection groups here is we have multiple ESX hosts, we have multiple data stores. The data stores don't even have to be from the same vendor. And we can have VMDK spread across all those data stores and the VMs themselves across multiple hosts. With Zerto, all you have to do is identify the VMs you want in an affinity grouping, put them together, create the VPG, and then replication starts. Now the requirements are you need ZVR installed and operational and then you can refer to the Zerto replication installation and getting started guide for all the details of that. Now it's time that we create a VPG. Okay so let's uh, make some room here. What we're going to do is create our first VPG our virtual protection group. So I'm going to move some things over and give us some more uh, space on our screen. Um, we do this because I've zoomed it up so much so you can see the details of the uh, of the tool as we use it. So I'm going to click on the Zerto tab. I've uh, selected application number two. And you notice that there's uh, options. Right now there's uh, I can't add one to an existing virtual protection group because one doesn't exist. What I want to do is create a new VPG. And I'm going to name this VPG application two VPG because... Uh, it indicates the affinity grouping that the VPG is going to be protecting. And I'm going to add multiple VMs to this VPG. So I'll have three or four VMs by the time I'm done. In the gray area, we have some default settings. The first one is priority. And the priority is talking about the priority between different VPGs. Everything comes in as medium, but if I need to indicate that one gets a little more bandwidth than the others in case of bandwidth contention, then I would select it as high. Next is RPOs. Now we start at five minutes as the default. That's when you're going to get notified. That's not the actual target RPO. The target RPO for Zerto is as quickly as we can. If we could hit zero, we would. But it comes in when you start getting alerts at five minutes and it can go to two hours and all the way down to 10 seconds. So we'll leave it at the default to five minutes because that's a good balance. Next is journal CDP history. It comes in as a default of four hours. We could change that all the way up to an hour and all the way down to 24 hours. And if we want to extend that even past the 24 hours to up to five days, what we do is we go and we hit the little gear beside the journal CDB history, and then we have a drop down box to where we can start uh, adding some different parameters. So we have the journal data store. If we've identified multiple data stores that could hold the journal, then we would select the one other than the default. The additional CDP history goes from none all the way up to 96 hours for a total of five days of point in time journal. The next drop down is the max journal size. Zerto has a helper tool to help you figure out the point in time duration that you want to keep versus the data store how much data that you're going to save and we can go all the way up to a terabyte in this drop down. The final is replication pause time. Replication pause time is a bit of an advanced feature. For this case, we won't really get into it. We'll cover that in an advanced podcast. If you want to enable WAN compression, just check the box. That gives you about an average of 50% bandwidth savings versus not using it.
If you have a hardware compression device already, just uncheck the box and use it. And when compression is per VPG. Next we're going to select some default values. We're going to select the target host, the target data store that we want our VPG to be saved to. We're, now we can go into failover and move networks. Notice we have two different networks we can pick from. There's the production network that I want to be able to fail over to, but then I want to do non-disruptive testing as well, so I have a dedicated test network. And then I'll just select the folder, which is the inventory of vCenter. Now I have multiple VMs for this VPG, so what I want to do now is add more to this VPG, and I'll just select Add. And I start selecting the virtual machines that I want to add to this affinity grouping for the application to VPG. And I'm going to add another one and hit OK. And then I think I'll grab a third, uh, third one to add to this group. And there it is. All right, now I've got multiple VMs in this uh, VPG, which means that we're going to have right order fidelity between all of the VMs in this VPG. So when we fail it over, they go all together. Now I want to change the boot order of these VMs. So I'm going to select boot order. And what you do is you add a different folder to this existing boot order. These are how the machines would boot ordinarily. I want to create a new folder. And then I'm going to call this boot later. Because I want to have about a 10 second delay between a couple of these VMs and two of the others and then I want the two others to boot in a specific order so let me add uh, around 10 seconds here and then I'm going to pull down a couple of VMs and have them boot in a little bit later than the first ones so now I have them separate I'm ready to save this so I'll uh, move this up a little bit and then uh, click, click OK Next thing I want to do is I want to select one of the VMs and I want to configure the network and the disk specifically because I can get to the VMDK level of granularity and also I can change between production and, and test networks on individual VMs in a VPG. So if we expand this out a little bit, we'll see that this, this particular VM has two VMDKs and I want to select one of the VMDKs and then I want to go in and I want to look at the configuration of it. So let me select this one. Configure selected volume. And now we see we have some options. So if it were a swap disk, I could make that swap disk. If it's uh, a recovery data store, if I want to change that, I can change it to a different data store for that one VMDK. If I select swap, what it will do is the initial sync, but then it won't sync after that. The recovery data store I can make thin or thick or thick to thin so I can change whether it's thin or thick depending on how I want that one BMDK to work. One of the most relevant things as far as getting large amount of data to get replicated faster is using preceding. So if we have copied over the VMDKs at the target location, all we have to do is use the preceed selection and just drill in to where the VMDKs are at the data store at the target location. When we select the correct one, it will do a delta sync. Now in this example, we didn't have any, so they're all grayed out. All right, so let's hit cancel there, and let's go down and look at our network settings. So let's configure our selected NIC. You'll see two different tabs. We have a failover move network and a failover test network. So on the move network, I can select the production network, I can make it DHCP or select a static address. And then I could enter in a custom static address if I need to. And on the test network, the same thing. I select the actual network that I want the machine to be on, which in this case is test. I can even create a new MAC address if necessary. And then I can go in and either go DHCP or static either one depending on my requirements. For now we'll leave these as is and we'll come back and do a separate podcast showing how to customize all this and how it looks when it fails over. So we'll just scroll down here and hit cancel. Okay next what we're going to look at is actually some recovery scripts. So if you have pre-recovery or post-recovery scripts we have it integrated into the VPG where you just add those in. What you'll find when you're doing non-disruptive testing, sometimes virtual machines in these virtual protection groups need a little help. 
and you can do that with scripts and we have that built right into our VPG creation tool to where those scripts are there and tested with your failovers and failbacks. So we have the VPG created the way we want it. So let's save it. And what we'll see is a status update here of it's now creating the production group. And as a reminder, all of these tasks are actually showing up in the vSphere client task because we're completely integrated in with vCenter and the vSphere client. So we can see the status of the protection group being created not only in the Zerto window but also in the recent task window. Our protection group is created and we start the sync. So you'll see a status here of the VPG syncing from site 1 to site 2. And you'll see some activities on the VPG summary window of the performance. You notice the throughput there is highly active right now. That's between the VPG uh, getting started, getting the sync from site 1 to site 2. Now we're in the protected state. Between site one and site two, we're ready to do failovers and fail back because we are now completely synced up. Now let's go and look at the summary screen that we looked at earlier. We should see a lot more activity now. And we do. It looks like we've got four VMs meeting their SLAs. We've got one protection group indicated by the blue arrows and we've got um, 80 gigs being protected. So we're in good shape. We're ready to do failovers even at the site level. So if you notice there at the bottom we could do a failover if we wanted to the entire site. If we look at our VPG list, since we only have one of course it's going to show our application to VMs VPG. If I scroll over I can look at the actual RPO of that VPG looks like it's around four or five seconds, six seconds. And that's going to vary as the I.O. of the source machines vary, so do the RPOs. But often you'll see them down in sub 10 second time frame. It's not unusual at all. Now we see the whole VM list. We can look at the individual VMs, how much is being used. Now three of those VMs are very, very small. I created them essentially as dummy VMs just for the sake of the demo here. And one of them's a full Windows VM that's got uh, got uh, drives in it and is an operating system and all. Now we look at our topology view. Now this gets a lot more exciting as you add sites. We just have two right now, but Zerto being a tool that you can connect any number of sites you want, that can really turn into a uh, very robust topology screen. So now we have one VPG created and ready to go. To summarize this podcast, we looked at the definitions of a VPG, the requirements, and we actually did an installation. Thank you for watching this Zerto Master of Disaster Create Virtual Protection Groups podcast. Watch other podcasts in this series to learn about the features and functionality of Zerto.